special relativity is built on the assumption that all physical laws are the same in all reference frames. This of course includes Maxwell's equations, which causes a problem with Galilean relativity, which simply adds velocities. For example, someone on a train could throw a ball at 3 meters per second. Um, the train is traveling at 20 meters per second, so in the frame of the ground, that ball is traveling at 23 meters per second. Now, instead of throwing a ball, consider turning a torch on, pointing down the axis of the train. Are the photons that the torch is emitting traveling at c plus 20 meters per second? Well, either Maxwell's equations are wrong, or uh, velocities do not simply add. The latter turns out to be true. I'm not going to go into a full explanation and all the consequences of this profound statement yet. I might later. Subscribe. But for the problem I outline in this video, you'll need to know about length contraction. Basically, moving objects contract such that they are shorter the faster they go. The flickering bulb paradox was a workshop question I did in my first year physics course. It's an interesting problem, and I urge you to give it a go yourself. After I've explained it, pause it and see if you can do it. Then resume to check your answer. So here we have two conducting rails connected to a light bulb and some power source. The rail is run parallel to infinity, but here, four meters along, the rail is bent outwards for two meters and then back in. A two meter carriage runs along the rails, connecting them with the conducting material, such that the circuit is closed and the bulb is lit. For slow speeds, the right hand side of the carriage touches the far side of the rail at the same time the left hand side of the carriage leaves contact with the near side, so the bulb stays lit as the carriage passes the bend. However, consider if the carriage is length contracted by a half such that it is only one meter long. Now, as it passes, the contact is broken and the bulb turns off as the left hand side leaves contact, then on again when the right hand side regains contact, the bulb flickers. But in the reference frame of the carriage, the carriage is still and the rail is moving. The rail is length contracted such that the bent part is only one meter and contact is never lost with both arms of the carriage. The bulb shouldn't flicker. No reference frame should be preferred over another, so we have a paradox or an apparent paradox. Does the bulb flicker or not? Pause the video here if you want to solve it yourself. So without further ado, here's the solution. Firstly, let's figure out how fast the carriage is going for its length to be contracted by a half. This is done by this equation, where beta is the fraction of c that the object is going. So solving for beta, we get beta equals the square root of 3 over 4 which is approximately 0 0.866. Note that whenever you are working through any physics problems, you should use exact values the whole way through, and only of around the final answer. We will use this result later, but first let's split the problem into four events. Define these as, event one is when the left-hand side of the carriage loses contact with the track, cutting the electrical flow around the track, the bulb is not initially aware of this break, as the signal must propagate 4 meters along the rail to reach the light bulb. The maximum speed it can propagate is c, so we will consider the case in which it propagates at c. It could propagate slower, but no faster. Event 2 is when the right-hand side of the carriage reconnects with the track after passing the gap. It sends a signal to the bulb that the reconnection has occurred. Again, the maximum speed this can propagate is c, and this time it must propagate 6 meters, as it must also cross the 2 meter gap. Event 3 is when the signal that contact has been lost reaches the light bulb. This is when the light turns off. Event 4 is when the signal that the contact has been gained reaches the light bulb. This is when the light bulb turns back on. Now let's see when these events occur. Firstly, let's consider the track stationary and the carriage moving at beta c. 
Obviously event 1 occurs first as it starts all the other events, let's define this as time 0. Event 2 is dependent on the time it takes for the carriage to cross the gap, where we'll use our value of beta found earlier. Remember the right hand side is already halfway across by the time the left hand side loses contact. So event 2 occurs at t equals 1 divided by beta c. That's approximately 3.8 times 10 to the negative 9 seconds. Event 3 is only dependent on when event 1 occurs and the time it takes for the signal to propagate. The time it takes to propagate is 4 divided by c, so t equals 4 divided by c, which is approximately 1.3 times 10 to the negative 8 seconds. Event 4 depends on the propagation time and when event 2 occurs. When event 2 occurs, the signal is sent and it must then propagate 6 meters. So the timestamp for event 4 is t equals 1 divided by beta c plus 6 divided by c, or approximately 1.4 times 10 to the negative 8 seconds. Now let's consider the case where we are in the reference frame of the carriage. Think of the carriage as still and the track is moving beneath it at beta c. This may seem odd if you have not considered reference frames other than the Earth's surface before, but this is an inertial reference frame, provided the carriage is not accelerating. It is really no different from the surface of the Earth, which is moving relative to other objects in space anyway. No reference frame should be preferred over another. Because the rail is length contracted and the carriage is normal from the frame of the carriage, the right hand side of the gap reaches the carriage first. In other words, event 2 occurs before event 1. Let's start the clock here and call it time 0. Event 1 occurs 1 divided by beta c after event 2, by the same argument as in the rail frame. Now the signal must propagate within the rail, but the rail is already travelling a significant portion of c. The signal must therefore travel at c minus beta c. So event 3 occurs at 1 divided by beta c plus 2 divided by c minus beta c, or approximately t equals 5.4 times 10 to the negative 8 seconds. Event 4 must occur at divided by c minus beta c, or approximately 7.5 times 10 to the negative 8 seconds. So even though the on signal leaves before the off signal, the off signal arrives first, so the bulb turns off for a time, and then event 4 occurs, and the bulb turns on again. In other words, it still flickers. In other words, there is no paradox. The bulb flickers in both frames. It, it only really looks like a paradox to those who have either not worked through the problem or have an improper understanding of special relativity. Did you try it? Did you get it right? Was this a question in your physics course? And are you cheating by looking up this video? Let me know in the comments and subscribe for more physics content.